بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين I am very delighted to be able to share with you my heartfelt congratulations for the birth anniversary of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and for the week of unity. We are all gifted with beautiful character of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was not only a blessing for Muslims, he was a blessing and a source of light and mercy for all mankind. And since he was a blessing for all mankind and since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him as a mercy for all people, as he says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ so in every society where Prophet وسلم, is respected, love, solidarity, peace, unity should appear because there is no way to follow the teachings of Prophet and his example without being motivated to work for unity. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was completely dedicated to Tawheed and he was with all the familiarity that we had about the problems in that society in which he was raised as a prophet with all problems there which we summarize it by saying that this was the era of jahiliya the era of ignorance but he was so insightful and he had such a strategic vision that he knew that the problem is lack of tawhid and he used to say, قُولُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ تُفْلِحُوا Say, there is no God but one God, and you would have salvation. If you say together, you would have salvation in dunya and akhirah. You would have comfortable, prosperous life in dunya, and then eternal one in the hereafter. But if not everyone or majority of people accept this at least those who say this and commit themselves to such a life they would have inner peace in dunya inner prosperity in dunya and comprehensive peace and happiness in the hereafter in the course of history there have been mu'minin who were challenged, who were troubled, who were annoyed, who were hurt, maybe were even killed, prosecuted by people who didn't appreciate Tawheed, but they had inner peace. But if the society, at least the majority of them altogether, accepted Tawheed, then they had best of dunya and best of akhirah. So this call for Tawheed is great part of teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we can say without hesitation and without any exaggeration that it is the core of the message of the Prophet and indeed all the messengers, because the Quran says, "لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ عَبْدُ اللَّهَ بَجْتَنِبُ الطَّاعُوتُ." This is Tawheed. So Allah has dispatched to all nations messengers with this message of Tawheed. But what we learn in Islam, 
what we learn very clearly in the teachings of the Prophet and in the Quran itself is that whoever is committed to unity of God should work for unity under God. You cannot be a divisive person or group and think you are committed to Tawheed. The Quran very clearly mentions that it was a satanic act of people like Pharaoh who used to divide people that creates enmity and hostility and separates people. Shia. He was dividing people. Shia means divided, partitioned. This is different from Shia, which means follower. Shia means divided. So he used to divide people. You know, as uh, you know, we are all familiar with this in different languages, you know, divide and rule, or in Arabic, you know, say, farraq tasud. This was a policy of people like Pharaoh to divide people so that they can more easily rule them and even claim and demand their worship as he used to put himself in the position of lordship. So, people like Pharaoh, people with satanic mind and policies divide people. But people who are committed to Tawheed, they unite people. And this unification is so important that Allah attributes to himself. Although we know that people have to establish this and he doesn't want to impose. He would offer and when people listen to Allah's plan, we would have unity. He doesn't want to force unity. He says, Lo sha Allah la jama'akum ala al he, had he wanted, he would have put all united around the guidance and truth. But he doesn't force, he offers. But it is such a great gift that when you work for it and this gift is given to you, like Muslims in the early years of Islam, Allah attributes this gift to himself. You are all familiar with this beautiful ayah, ayah 103 of Surah Ali Imran. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Wa'atasimu bahablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraku. We should all grasp to the rope of God and be united around it, not divided. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَا قُلُوبَكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتَهِ إِخْوَانِ Remember, never forget, Muslims of that time, Muslims of future, anyone who believes in divine revelation, they should remember this important incident that people who used to fight and kill each other and were, you know, frustrated by that. Allah gifted them with unity and brotherhood. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ He united your hearts. He brought reconciliation among you. He attributes it to himself. It is true that it was the teaching of the Prophet, it was commitment of the Muslims, it was their uh, freedom from greediness and selfishness and ego that helped them. But all these beautiful gifts all come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's so important that he attributes to himself. 
فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا ده and again he repeats he said واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم again he says فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار you were on the edge of the fire to be dropped into the fire فَأَنْغَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا But he rescued you and saved you and brought you far away from that fire. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْدَلُ In this way, Allah explains his signs, his communications for you so that you would be guided. He beautifully illustrates with examples his teachings for us. So it's such a great gift that we should day and night work for getting it, to take it, and we should never forget it. We should never take it for granted. If you live in a society where believers are united, Sunni, Shia are acting as brothers and sisters. They love each other, they respect each other, they collaborate. You must be very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do whatever you can to maintain and strengthen this. But if, God forbids, you live in a society in which Muslim community is divided, you should know that this society is not under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's unifying force, unifying power, unifying guidance. And we need to go back closely to a condition where we can be under his unifying care, unifying power. Everyone has to work hard for establishing unity if they want to act as Allah wants and not act as Pharaoh. Amirul Mu'minin was very, very committed to unity. And this is not surprising because whoever is dedicated to Islam dedicated to faith, dedicated to will of God, for sure he would be dedicated to unity. Those who divide people, you should doubt their genuine faith. Either they are ignorant or they are not sincere. It's very rare that an educated, enlightened, faithful, sincere believer would take unity as something which is not important, something which is not necessary. It's very rare. Maybe you can say it's impossible. Unless someone has, you know, big misunderstandings. Any Muslim who is enlightened and is sincere, his love for Islam, his love for faith, his love for the values that we share, and indeed we share with other believers in God, would make him committed to unity. Now look at this beautiful saying of Amirul Mu'min al-Salam in Nahjul Balagha, Sermon 192. He says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَ قَدِمْتَنَّ عَلَى جَمَاعَةِ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ فِي مَا عَقَدَ بَيْنَهُمْ مِنْ حَبْلِ هَذِهِ الْأُلْفَةِ Referring to to the verse from Surah Al-Imran وَأَتَصِبُوا وَحَبْلِ اللَّهَ جَمِعًا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهَ عَلَيْكُمْ As we just explained, he says, Allah has truly obliged, امتنى, has had great favor upon this Ummah by uniting them and bringing this bond among them. The rope of ulf, friendship, affectionate love. 
التي ينتقلون في ظلها ويأبون إلى كنفها بنعمة لا يعرف أحد من المخلوقين لها قيمة He says this is a blessing that they live they move around they take refuge from this blessing and no creature la ya'rafu ahadun min al no creature knows the value of this gift of this name لأنها أرجح من كل ثمن وأجل من كل خطر. This is better than any cost, any price, and it's greater than any value because unity of Ummah and Islam are two sides of the same coin. Unity of Ummah and Tawheed are two sides of the same coin. The late Kashif al said, Bunya al Islam ala kalimatain, kalimat al Tawheed wa Tawheed al Kalima. Islam is built on two words word of unity and unity of word. Unity of God and unity in God. If we don't have unity, we would lose Islam. Either all together or maybe the name remains but there is no esprit of Islam a society in which m Muslims hate each other accuse each other billah, kill each other excommunicate each other this is not Islamic even if they call themselves Islamic true Islam can be verified by seeing love, brotherhood, respect. And even if there are Muslims from any sect, any group, who don't open up, who don't show love, respect to other Muslims, this would not give others excuse to do the same. We should, like members of the family, that when we have troublemakers in the family who would want to divide the family, we should be extra patient so that the family remains together. And inshallah, maybe these people also would wake up. Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam says, Ilzamul jama'ah wajtanibul furqa. Be always with the group of Muslims and believers who are united. Remain with the community. Avoid division, separation. Or in another place, وَإِيَّاكَ وَالْفُرْقَةَ فَإِنَّ الشَّاذَّ مِنَ النَّاسِ لِلشَّيْطَانِ كَمَا أَنَّ الشَّاذَّ مِنَ الْغَنَمْ لِلذِّئْبِ if you have a group of, for example, sheep or goats, and one of them goes away, there is a great chance that wolf or wolves may get and kill and eat that sheep or goat, which is not remaining with the herd. Amir al says, those who are not with jama'ah, those who are not with the community of Muslims and in the name of sectarianism or other names they try to say we are a special and the rest are not you know equal to us so we cannot be united with them so they end up with being alone and then he says those who isolate themselves and go away they would be for shaitan, pray for shaitan. Shaitan would attack them easily, misguide them easily, take control of them easily.
Alhamdulillah, it's now 14 centuries that Sunni Shias have lived together and we have hundreds of millions of Sunnis and Shias of course the majority is with the Sunnis but we have hundreds of millions of Muslims from different schools in different countries have lived together for 14 centuries peacefully but this is not enough in need to maintain and build upon this experience and make ourselves more united and make such a strong bond of brotherhood among us that no challenge would be shaken our brotherhood now that we are challenged by waves of secularism liberalism individualism things that affect our children our youths and even our own selves from the culture of materialism and from lack of respect for family for community for the elders for the traditions we need to get together and put our resources our manpower together and invite allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among ourselves so that we would be able to overcome all these challenges it's absolutely wrong to spend our energy on attacking each other on boycotting each other i think even if we respect each other and we don't collaborate we cannot answer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why you didn't collaborate why you didn't work together didn't you have a common enemy then you have common challenges if you loved me if you loved these values why you didn't work together wasn't your love for me greater than your differences what answer we have to give to Allah if Allah says if you really loved me if you really loved Rasulullah you loved Quran and you loved all these values why you didn't put aside your differences for practical measures you can keep your differences for yourself but for practical measures you have to be working as one team and then extend your hands of collaboration to other believers in God from other traditions so that we would have a united front of believers in God and believer in families, believers in family, in education, in peace, in justice, in truth, against people who don't believe in such things and they just want to enjoy themselves or maybe they want to do even, you know, injustice. There are different types of people. We need to be together a good example as Allah says كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا وَلَتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ This Ummah cannot be Ummah Wasat, cannot be a middle and balanced Ummah and be a witness for others if it is divided. Who would be interested in a witness, in an example which has not been able to unite its own people. We have to overcome all these separations or divisions and fortify our unity. May Allah bless all people who are committed to bringing believers together. May Allah bless all the efforts 
who are there for uniting the Ummah and indeed moving forward to uniting humanity. May Allah be always with you. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam. Thank you.